Welcome to the Solar Decathlon Building Science Education Series. I'm Paul Tarsalini, and in this episode, we're going to share a video developed by the U.S. Department of Energy to showcase a zero energy elementary school in Arlington, Virginia. We hope you enjoy, and as always, please let us know if you have any questions. We've been in Arlington since 2008. I have two children. One is in first grade here, and then one is in kindergarten. It's a 26 square mile community, and it's a mixture of suburban and very urban. We have a, a school system that is growing rapidly from year to year, almost a thousand students a year. School is built around this idea of sustainability. So we do a lot to instill in our students the idea of greenness and what we can do to help the environment. We had a goal that it would become an example of how to integrate uh, learning and teaching with environmental stewardship. We wanted to do that to a level that we hadn't seen before. There's a great deal of transparency inside the school. The classrooms are not closed off from the rest of the school. When the school district said, yes, we're going to build this school, they hired an architectural firm that said, hey, we can do this and make it net zero energy. And that really fit into Arlington's ideals. And so they said, yeah, let's do it. Zero Energy School is a school that during the course of a calendar year will produce at least as much energy as it consumes. We've got about $100,000 a year in um, cost avoidance. So we have saved a great deal. Our task when we set out to do this, the school system, the architects, and the educators, was to really push the boundaries and set a new standard and demonstrate what can truly be achieved on a public school budget. When we talk about being environmentally friendly and forward thinking, we are building buildings for our students of the future, not of the past. People didn't believe it. They didn't think this could really happen. But here we are, and now we're finding it's really net positive. I think part of the job of a good architect is to be a bit of a provocateur. Net Zero was a really great framework for doing that. Once we got agreement on it, we had to look at everything from how food was prepared to how the IT system worked to how the building was scheduled and say, how can we make little tweaks to save a little bit of energy? The really important thing is the need for the design team to be integrated. They put together a team that was experienced and could do this for us. So what that means is you reduce the energy use intensity of the school as low as you can, so that when you add renewable sources, in this case solar, um, you're adding a reasonable amount. So building orientation and massing is where we start. We looked at different shapes, different sizes, different orientations. We looked at every decision in terms of how much more or less renewable energy do you have to buy to offset that decision. The second step then is the envelope and an obsessive focus on an air sealing and making sure that it's tight. Once we set off down the path of zero energy, we really kind of took up the idea that we should celebrate light in every way possible in the school. There are some things that are absolutely essential that we see them in just about every zero energy school, at least in this climate zone. Using LED lights throughout greatly reduces the cooling loads. The other big thing is the geothermal field, which reduces energy consumption dramatically. So geothermal systems are fairly common, but instead of going to a large central unit, it's a distributed system. So there's all these small, almost residential sized units throughout the building. So we can really turn this building on and off to a very fine degree. The conditioned air system is always providing fresh air at all times. A big thing about zero energy is that it really creates culture change among all the stakeholders. 
it really does focus the whole school community on sustainability in a way that I just was not prepared for. So the kids are absolutely on it. Our vision at Discovery is to create innovators of technology with a interest in our world and making an impact. So the building is a teaching tool. We learned about, you know, how solar panels work and how much energy they produce. In art class, we made sculptures out of recycled materials. We were helping the ecosystem by recycling these water bottles, and we were providing decoration for our school. We did a project that taught the first graders how to recycle. What goes where and why this really matters. Can you please do this? And then they listened. I didn't realize you needed that many solar panels to power this school. It makes you realize how much energy you actually use. As a parent, it's amazing that my kids get to experience technology that's on the forefront in their classroom every day. We'll have research projects completely centered around different components of the school, from the geothermal wells to the, um, the, the solar hot water generation for the cafeteria. So it makes things more authentic for students. We did a project on the Energy Jasport. We were looking at how to save more energy in the school because we had some pretty good ideas. So let's switch over and maybe look at the month. This is an opportunity for us to talk about science, technology, engineering, math, arts. So if you look at the top. And tie them into a commitment to build buildings and follow philosophies that are environmentally sustainable over a long period of time. The nature of this building and the concept of net zero, what better place than a school? Because you're so impactful anyway, you're educating students, that's the most important thing. The life cycle costs of a zero energy school are a great deal less than others. They're reducing the fixed costs of the school district. They're also controlling energy costs because we're generating the energy. It's not subject to cost increases. And that appeals to school boards because it's fiscal responsibility. If you're looking at the big picture, your ongoing expenses, which come out of property taxes, they're there forever. Zero energy allows us to leverage that one-time debt event and translate it into savings that go on and on and on. Long term, the return on investment is what we're looking to capture. This underlines our commitment to making the planet sustainable for our young people in school today and their children after them. The amount of savings this school saw in the first year is the, is the salary for two teachers. Now that's a big deal. It's sort of a beacon to the community. Look, this can be done. That our kids are benefiting from it that this is possible, we can do it, and look at the difference it makes. It's the greatest opportunity I've ever been given. It's amazing to be able to share this with other people. We get visitors from all over the world. Everywhere is a teachable moment. That's what makes it such an exciting place to work. It's inspiring everywhere. If you're looking to do something a little different and put something on the face of the earth that's gonna make a difference, then, uh, then make it count. At my old school, we didn't have anything close to this. And I think it's just so cool to be a part of this. By coming to school, I'm helping the environment and learning new things, and I'm excited. There is no reason that we can't use public school construction anywhere in this country to advance zero energy. Cost certainly is not, not the reason.